Hi, this is Lee Ellis with another installment of Leading with Honor Coaching. Well, thank you for joining us today. You know, if you've been watching the media, you probably have seen what I've seen, and that is a continuous flow of people with character violations, or apparently so. You know, in the military, we were very concerned about that, and so throughout my career, we were always reminded to avoid even the appearance of wrongdoing not just the wrongdoing. We had a lot of conversations about the wrongdoing also. But when you think about avoiding the appearance of wrongdoing, that uh, takes it to another level. But the reality is, as leaders and as individuals, it's a good rule of thumb to have because if there's an appearance of wrongdoing, others are going to think there's wrongdoing and that's going to undermine your influence. And quite often, if there's an appearance of wrongdoing, there is wrongdoing. So. We just have to think about that. Recently, this has come to my mind because I know there's a governor out in the Midwest that's under a big battle, and he admits to some wrongdoing, uh, at least moral wrong, uh, wrongdoing, and he's been accused of some ethical and legal wrongdoing, which, which he's denied. But the fact that there has been some things done that shouldn't have been done has brought a lot of attention, and he's in a real battle. And for closer to home here in the South, we have a mayor who was a very popular mayor and seemed to have done a good job. And, but now that he's out of office, uh, the federal government has subpoenaed his uh, documents and all that sort of thing. So there's a, a lot going on there, investigation. And within his administration, there were some issues with others that were misappropriating funds or using influence and selling influence and that sort of thing. So, you know, these are good folks, uh, I think. But somehow uh, there's an appearance of wrongdoing, and uh, it just worries me. As I've noticed over the years, and I wrote about in the book Engage with Honor in Chapter 1, and there's a long litany of honor violations there that goes back several thousands of years. You know, we're human beings, and we're very susceptible to getting off track, getting off course. We talked about that last month in our coaching about accountability and how accountability sets guardrails. There are other ways I think we can protect ourselves. I think we have to take care of ourselves first, and that's where it all starts in us setting a good example for others. So I think this month I'd like to offer you four uh, principles or four tips that will help you to guard your character and to avoid the appearance of wrongdoing. First of all is be realistic. Understand that you are a human being and that you are capable of doing some things that will certainly appear as wrongdoing. You know, in my finances, I tell my CPA to get me as close to the line as he possibly can without getting over it. You know, the reality is we're all one step away from being a crook. And I think that's exactly the situation with my finances. So I want to make sure I know where that line is. I want to stay on the legal side and that's part of his job and my bookkeeper and everybody around me. I certainly don't intend to make any uh, mistakes, but uh, we're all human beings and mistakes can happen, so they help me. I have to guard against the intentional part though because as a business person, I could cheat every day on somebody probably. So it's that temptation's always there. And we need to recognize our human vulnerability. We see things sometimes through a different set of eyes, we start to having fears that maybe cause us to want to do something that we shouldn't do, or maybe we do something and then we tell a little lie to overcome it. Well, we don't want to get in that position. So we got to understand that we are vulnerable. We're human beings and we're tempted by power, by prestige, by pleasure, and we got to prepare ahead of time. I think that's the real thing is to be prepared, which is step two. Be prepared and be proactive by clarifying what it is you really stand for and who do you want to be? Who are you and who do you want to continue to be as a person of character, a person of influence for your legacy? What is your commitment? And if you don't clarify those commitments very specifically up front, then it's easy to slide over and to justify and to rationalize. And especially when you're emotionally involved, either excited or angry or disappointed. I once uh, did my um, master's uh, program in related to human development, and it was I did my uh, internship uh, practicum actually in the federal prison in Montgomery, Alabama. 
and almost everybody I interviewed uh, there was never guilty of anything. They're always innocent. They rationalize. And one guy who was a graduate of a very prominent engineering school told me that uh, he, the reason he cheated with the contractors, he was a city engineer for a small town in South Georgia. He cheated because they, he kept asking for a raise and they wouldn't give him a raise. So he finally worked out a deal with the contractor so that every 10th load of asphalt was his, so to speak. He got a kickback. So he was rationalizing. We want to be proactive and know what we stand for and draw that line and be emotionally clear. Now, what helps us in that is step three, and that's be in community. We want to have people around us who can speak into our lives and who can call us out sometimes when we're starting to head in the wrong direction and can question us. But we also need to be on our own being proactive to ask them, does this pass the smell test? So if this young fellow had gone to some good friends and said, look, what do you think about this? They obviously would have said, well, what do you think? And he would have said, well, it is illegal. And they said, well, you probably ought not to do it. There's some big risk there, you know? So having community around that can encourage you as a person about who you are, but also encourage you and give you good feedback and wisdom when you're dealing with things that you're emotionally involved in and you're more likely to make uh, a bad decision sometimes when we're highly emotionally involved. We need that community support. Fighter pilots, uh, special forces, Navy SEALs, we never fight alone. We always want someone there with us to watch our back and to support us and encourage us along the way. So we've talked about being realistic, being prepared, being in community. And the fourth one is be courageous. This is not easy stuff. If it was easy, we wouldn't, there wouldn't be much to write about in the papers every day, would there? Or to print on uh, TV or to publish on TV and other media. People would be doing the right thing. They would be avoiding the appearance of doing wrong. But we know that Often, it's a lack of courage that causes people to cave in and to do things that they shouldn't do. So there's a couple of kinds of courage and dealing with fear. One of the fears is we want to have the good fear that we will, so that we can avoid doing the wrong thing because we fear the consequences. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, touching a hot stove burns your hand, and we fear that consequence, so we don't touch the hot stove. So that's a good fear. But there are other kinds of fear also that, uh, that, that may get in the way, and they're bad fears. <clears throat> and that's uh, fears that, uh, that keep us from doing the right thing. We're afraid that someone won't like us. We're afraid it won't be accepted if we don't have a certain thing, if we don't have a certain amount of money or whatever. We don't want to listen to those fears. We want to push those aside and be realistic and keep coming back to who is it that we're committed to be and be realistic about ourselves as human beings. So I think that's uh, just a reminder. It's, it's like there's nothing new that you don't know here, but what I'm really encouraging you and myself is to continue to be proactive, to guard our character, and to take steps so that we clarify in advance who we are, who we wanna be, and what we're willing to do and what it will take to do to be that kind of person. I'll tell you, our young people are looking for people that are realistic and genuine and that have character and that have courage, that have commitment, that are willing to do the right thing. They deserve that in their leaders. And we deserve to protect ourselves by guarding our character and be the honorable leaders that we need to be. You know, we'd love to hear from you and love to hear the uh, experiences that you've had in guarding your character. Uh, maybe you want to share a time when you stepped over the line and what that was like getting back across. Uh, we've all done that at one time or another in some capacity. So please uh, share and share this message with your friends, I hope. And I look forward to seeing you again next month for more Leading with Honor coaching.